John chapter 2 verses 6 to 11 I'm reading from the um, the tree of life version of the Bible and I'm back here again if you with me we might as just well tear this part out of the Bible stick it on our forehead and just walk around with it but you can also just learn these verses <clears throat> Now there were six stone jars, that's what you're seeing over there, used for the Jewish ritual of purification, each holding two, each holding two to three measures. Yeshua said to them, fill the jars with water. If you're brand new to this church and maybe to Christianity and you don't know why we keep singing Yeshua and this one singing all about your names, say it all and all this stuff. Yeshua just means Jesus, okay? It's just the Hebrew way of saying Jesus. Yeshua said to them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them up to the top. And he said to them, take some water out and give it to the head waiter. And they brought it. Now the head waiter did not know where it had come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. As the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, every drunk's favorite scripture. <laughs> Some of your favorite scripture. As the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, he calls to the bridegroom and says to him, everyone brings out the good wine first. And when they're drunk, then the worse. But you've reserved the good wine until now. Yeshua did this. That's what I'm preaching. Yeshua did this. The first of the signs in Cana of Galilee, he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Today, we, you are, you're very, very blessed to be here in the first of a series of sermons. This is part one, so you didn't miss anything. And I encourage you to not miss a single one in this series called Supernatural. That's the name of the series, Supernatural, not the TV series. Bigger than the TV series. Because we're going to talk about all of the supernatural things that God has given us in the earth. Like the communion that we'll take in a few weeks. Do you know that's supernatural? Okay, we're going to talk about that then. But right now we're talking about supernatural. And the subtext of this sermon is Yeshua did this. Father, anoint your servant. Bless your word. Amen. You may sit. Praise Jesus. So I said I was going to show you my sermon and what it looked like. And so I'm just going to, um, they gave me the capability to mirror my iPad and show you what's going on here right now. It's not up yet. I'm sure you can see that, right? Oh. Okay, hold on. Huh? Wait, hold on. See the eye? Do you see it? Oh wait, that's not all. See that? Okay, look, you see that? And this basketball court. And this, when he starts talking so quick that I can't keep up, I just have to draw. And that's what happened to me this, this Sunday um, as I was preparing. And you're going to get to find out what on earth. Look at this little one running. By the way, that's Malia. If you look close enough, you'll see the little red shoes. That's her. And, and then on the left here, all these cars. I'll explain that in a second. And then this thing here with the upside down cross and the, the weird person in the front. And that's our church. That. <laughs> and I didn't know how to draw what he was showing me. So I just had to draw lightning coming out of it and the church rocking, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> Let me just get out of here so I can preach. All right. Oopsie. <laughs> Look, there ain't nothing there that I'm afraid for you to see. I woke up yesterday, uh, Friday morning, with this word in my spirit, and the word was special reserve. 
That's what I heard. I, I sat straight up out of my bed and I heard the words special reserve. And <clears throat> not being a connoisseur of wine myself, not, okay, not knowing the first thing about wine except it's red or white. Don't correct me. That's all I know and that's all I really want to know. Um, I didn't know that that was a wine-related term, but I know what the Holy Spirit was saying and that's what I heard special reserve special reserve by the way these beautiful green shoes have you ever seen a shoe this color before that this bright these are my free shoes this is a testimony shoe I'm gonna stand up here so those of you who didn't see it can I'm not standing up on that next thing it break and I get embarrassed myself these shoes are a testimony that when God sends a storm that when God sends a storm, that he is just making preparation for his children. And that's what every storm in your life is just God saying, I've got something planned for you. And this color is, by the way, called Ralph Lauren Green. Ralph Lauren Green. This is actually the color. And before you go and tell everybody I'm boasting about my shoes, I got to tell you that when Hurricane Sandy hit, um, six, six feet of water was in my closet. And that meant all my clothes and all my, not my expensive shoes, but my cheap shoes, all my shoes got flooded. And so we were living in this, in this building right here that you are in right now. We were sleeping on the floors of this building, my husband, myself, Pastor Jude and his family, and several other people, about 90 people slept here, right? But a few of us lived here for six months. And all our stuff was destroyed in the storm. And unfortunately, neither us nor Pastor Jude and his family had flood insurance. Because where we lived had never flooded before. And so we lost all our stuff. But then one day, um, when the Lord did what he did in that storm, our warehouse, which is going to turn into the sanctuary. By the way, you might not have been able to find a good seat this morning because we were packed when the kids weren't here. But in a few months, we'll have a thousand seats. And so... <clears throat> And you'll be able to find your seat. So please don't stop coming if you can't find a seat. There are a bunch of people who are willing and anxious to sit on the floor. If that's you, put your hand up. Look, see, all those are going to be empty seats right in here. So next week, I want to challenge you to invite somebody. How many of you shared your story this week? God bless you for being obedient to the word of God. I shared my story every day this week because when he speaks, he speaks to me too. I woke up and said, Lord, I don't care if I'm not supposed to meet anybody. I want to, you're going to make somebody meet me. And Jude, if you, if, I'm getting excited. I don't even have the voice to be as excited as I feel on the inside right now. But Pastor Jude wanted to share his story, but he was outside busy sharing food. Like literally, tonight, th today when you leave this place, he has prepared a box of food for every family in this church this morning. And uh, I know, you see how we excited about it? You know, we, we not starving. Like we don't, we don't line up by the shelters for food. But when God gives us a free box of food, we're there. And you might say, Pastor Shah, I'll give it to somebody that needs it. I'll take it. You know why? Because we already gave it to the people that needed it. And that we had so much that God left enough over so that his children can also be blessed. So on your way out, grab yourself a great box. We have some good stuff in there. What do we have, Jude? Cereal, rice, beans, oil. Oh, the ladies like oil, I want my box. The rice and beans, and I don't care, but you see the oil I going for. You know, you know, you might not want to take it now, but one day you'll be glad for that. Huh? Anyway, so we were in here living, living on the floors and out of a suitcase, really. And uh, the Lord had Ralph Lauren send an 18 wheeler full of clothes here. I mean, how many of you were there for that? Oh, me, you still wearing them Ralph Lauren dresses. Like Omi, every dress in that 18 wheeler was in Omi's size. Omi and Pastor Danielle at the time. I had the, they, they, they could have taken a million dresses because, because the Lord. He's like, you never lose nothing when you're in me. If you're in Christ, it might look like a loss, but your loss is temporary. When God removes something from the life of a believer, he is just creating room to put something else in its place. 
something that's better. I'm going to show you that concept of how God makes room. Can you tell, tell somebody, God's making room for my stuff. So instead of boohooing over what he has allowed to leave you, what he has allowed to be allowed to be removed from your life why not say thank you lord that you've made some space that you can put what you want in the middle of my, of my life amen and so this is what i got from the ralph lauren box these shoes and i've given everything else away but i'll never give these shoes away because i always want to remember that god said how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of them who bring good news that's it told you the story back to the sermon so I woke up with the term special reserve just boiling 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 in my spirit and not knowing exactly what the term referred to I looked it up I googled it and apparently special reserve is a wine term why you know that just kidding I'm kidding a special reserve is a wine term and um, if you see a bottle of wine and it says reserve on it it means there's something special going on in the bottle. Apparently, it means that, <clears throat> first of all, there's no legal stipulation as to why that has to be there. Because there are $4 bottles of wine that say reserve on it. And so those of you with your box wine would say reserve, it's not really, right? But if, if it says reserve on it, Malan's laughing. I see you can just laugh. Malan's like, the amount of box wine I drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the bottle says reserve could mean that it was a limited amount of that particular vintage. It could mean that the grape that they made the wine from does not exist anymore and it will never be grown again. It could mean that the oak that they cured the wine in was of a special quality. It could mean it was a very small batch that was made by that vineyard. It could mean that it was a very special grape year and it was so it could mean anything. How do you know when a wine is reserved? So I, I was like, how do you know what it actually means when you see it on the bottle? So I googled that. And the only way to know what makes a wine reserved or what that word means is to call the vineyard. The only way is to call the one who made the wine. The only way you know what that reserve stands for is to go to the person who created the wine and ask them, what does that reserve mean? So God woke me up and told me, I'm about to pour my special reserve upon my people. And you know, the only way we know what that means is we've got to go to the one who created that anointing, who made that wine and say, God, what are you going to do in this hour? Is there anybody who says they're ready for new wine and fresh oil? New wine and fresh oil. So he took me back to the, I, I mean, really, you think it's a coincidence that the very first miracle that Christ ever did was turning water into wine? Every time we have a wedding at this church, I ask God why. He did that first. Okay, so you see where they put my props and where the post is? Right? You understand when, when, when production tells me I keep standing behind the post. It's just because that's where the prop is. <laughs> so, I asked the Lord, I'm like, I need a glass, a cup. Is there one there? Okay, I asked for that, yeah. <clears throat> so, why was that the first miracle, Lord? Because every time we have a wedding in this church and people bring the alcohol in their trunk. <laughs> the Trinis, not the Trinis. Put your hand on. <laughs> they put the put, <laughs> and, and they see me. I don't say anything. You know, I don't want that happening in my yard, but I don't go and stop them. They come to me. They see me coming. And they send the uncle. <laughs> Pastor Sharo. <laughs> yes, sir. The very Jesus, turn water. I'm like, wait, are you well know the Bible? 
What else do you know? No, that's it. That's all they know. That's all. Everybody of every religion, even the atheists know Jesus turned water into wine. I was like, Lord, you're well set me up there. And he said that was not a coincidence. That was not a coincidence. He did that because he was showing the church that he, about the way that he was going to pour out of his spirit. So as the Lord began to tell me, he began to say, um, it's time for revival. I said, Lord, the Rockaway revival, that's what we're in. What you saw today was all part of the Rockaway revival. What is the Rockaway revival about? It's God promising us that he was going to begin a revival on the Northeastern Corridor starting on the streets of Rockaway. It didn't start today. You know when it started? It started when statistics showed that every abortion clinic on this street and... You don't even want to hear me. We didn't notice what God was doing. We didn't come up with those statistics. It was the National Center for Abortion that came up with those statistics that said something ridiculous is going on and that street is the dividing line where if you want to have an abortion, you're going to have to not be able to go on that street or south. All of a sudden, clinics started closing down from our street. Ruthie, I'm telling you, that's not a coincidence. Because I remember we started walking our street with oil in our bottles. We started and we called it, we said we were praying the route. What route? The parade route. Our church does a massive parade. And just to get prepared, we started praying the route, Adina. And we carried our oil. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord said to stop, we stopped. And we poured the oil. And we bound up the spirit of death. And we bound up the spirit of murder. And we bound up the spirit of Molech. And we bound up the spirit that caused our children to be offered to the fire. And we declared the life. And we declared the presence of the Lord on Rockaway Boulevard. And we declared that things were going to start changing starting from here and Jamaica was going to be set on fire for the glory of almighty God and he started doing it without us he started doing it somebody shout unto God I heard the Lord say that it's time for revival I said God it started already he said it's special reserve time I said but where is that in the word he said I'll send you the former and the latter rain together he said new wine and fresh oil new wine and fresh oil Ruthie told me afterwards no, Ruthie told me before. 5.45 in the morning, we're praying. 6 o'clock in the, in the warehouse. Right? We're praying. The warehouse, for those of you who are new, are, is where our new sanctuary is going to be. We're walking up and down in the warehouse. And Ruthie has a vision, an open vision. The Lord takes her into a vision. We're not praying together in there. We're in different places, but we're praying. And the Spirit of the Lord shows her a huge vat of grapes. She doesn't know where I'm going. I didn't, I'd already prepared my sermon. And when she tells me, she comes to me and she said, this is the vision the Lord showed me. A big vat full of grapes. And then I see two big feet. And they go into the grape. And I see the wine start to pour out. I see the, the juice of the grape start to come out of the crushing. And I heard the Lord say, that's my special reserve. Nobody makes this but the Holy Ghost himself. Church, are you ready? I'm ready too. He goes to Cana. There are five different prophetic words in this house this morning. God said to me, it is time for the next level of revival. I said to God, but I thought we were already in revival. Let me go back and show you my iPad. Okay, look, here, yeah, the conversation, God, it is time for the next level of revival. Me, but I thought we were already in revival. God. As I begin to write, instead of just speaking the conversation, I began to write what I was hearing, and I began to hear him say, it is time for the special reserve. Now, over there, you see a little box, right? 
Okay, so if I play the video, I'm so sorry, I forgot to send you this, but I have to show them. If I play the video on my iPad, will it show? Okay, so let me show you how God confirmed this word. So imagine me, I get up off my bed, I start writing, we have this conversation, and uh, I go upstairs and Kurt says to me, there is a million packages by the door. Do you remember this? And I was thinking, but I didn't order anything. I always think that. It is never actually so. So I pulled in the boxes and it was ping pong balls and clear tubes that I ordered for wilder ones and things of that nature. But there was this one small box. That's what I drew there. And in that box, I, I forgot what it was. But in that box, as I opened it, was some vitamins that I ordered about. Yeah, don't show it yet. Some of this is not church worthy it's not bad it's just like I don't want you to see photos of me <clears throat> this video is playing on TV all right so it's this package and a random package of vitamins that I ordered like three months ago off TikTok <laughs> don't judge me okay People say it makes you, your hair, the grays, turn black. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a miracle. <laughs> You're like, pasta, I can't believe you ordered it. If I come back and tell you it works, everybody's going to get it. Somebody's got to guinea pig their way through it. But anyway, let me, let me show you this. Video. This is the vitamin box, okay? This is what happened. Still a little sleepy. <laughs> Do you see that? I don't know if you can see it. I opened the box. And I wasn't even paying attention, Jude. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, just read now, read now. And I look down and it says, start your... Okay, you are like... Pastor Sharo, you see God in everything. I am like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do see him. And he can speak in any way he wants to speak. That's all I needed. I didn't even move for a long time. I was prostrate on the stairs of my living room because my Abba is speaking. And if he is begging me, if he is saying, child, make room for me, open up the door for me, I'm ready to blow in this place, then you can't blame me if little Zoe stays on the floor for about half an hour speaking in the spirit. You can't make me upset that all my kids are running up and down prophesying and speaking the word of the Holy Ghost because he said in the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and upon my servants and my handmaidens will I pour out of my spirit in those days special reserve time I'm ready Lord I'm ready it's time for it the better wine is served next somebody feel it in your gut maddie whatever you felt before the better wine you know what the lord of the feast said most people serve the best wine he said but you are serving come here baby girl come come you No, no, I'm going to pray that, that pain out of her body right now in the name of Jesus. Come, come, come. Shut your hands this way. Let me tell you something. When you operate in a prophetic like she does, when you heal the sick like she does in the name of Jesus, when you intercede for a whole church, the devil makes a target out of you. But I declare over this woman's body in the name of Jesus right now that no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Every pain, put your hand on the small of her back, Dr. Donna. Put your hand right there in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I pray new wine, new wine poured out upon you. A new anointing, a new refreshing, and healing. Every discomfort in your hips. 
it's leaving you now in the name of Jesus every pain down the back of your leg is leaving you now in the name of Jesus your Abba said to tell you there's a special reserve for you daughter there is a special a special reserve for that daughter in the name of Jesus because she's got souls to save she's got people to deliver she's got bodies to raise up the dead itself is going to raise up in the name of Jesus somebody give God glory he is a healer he's a healer Ooh. the Spirit of the Lord is busy this morning no 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 he's he's here for that you see if she has somebody's miracle in the middle of her palm today the devil's gonna uh, he's gonna poke until she can't move and I believe that today somebody's gonna be utterly and completely delivered there are people delivered from demons this morning right here in this altar I saw them fly off of several people right here but there was also the Holy Ghost if you're sitting next to somebody and you can feel their oppression coming on you right now in the name of Jesus I rebuke that spirit of depression that spirit of oppression every hindering thing in the atmosphere go in Jesus name the better wine is served next Habba says get ready get ready for better wine in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 23 and 24 when I read that scripture just now and I said Jesus said God said in the last days right I will pour into my spirit you know that one about your young men and your old men and your right hear what it says in that scripture as well so be glad children of Zion rejoice in Adonai your God for he gives you the early rain for prosperity Hallelujah. right there somebody should have said I seen the hand of God we didn't have a house we could have been in a shelter but praise be to God I've seen the hand of God I don't know about you but when I came to this city I wasn't expecting a house but praise be to God he gave me a roof over my head he gave me a place to live he put food on my table hey if I had to pay you if I was God and I had to reward you based on your praise he, I'm not saying he does but if I had to you'd have been so mad at me like people are mad right now why God blessing you and God ain't blessing me I don't know I can't put my finger on it I feel I, that the zeal is not like very consuming this morning the better wine is served next get ready for better he said I gave you the early rain for prosperity yes he will bring down the rain for you the early rain and the latter rain hear this the threshing floors will be full of grain and the vats will overflow with a new wine and fresh oil we in church like to pick either new wine or fresh oil I want make me a salad and put me some new wine and fresh I want both can anybody say I want both new wine and fresh oil and somebody give him praise the better wine comes next Carlene the Lord showed me you raising up a dead person girl you always wanted to do that you always wanted to yeah I just feel the presence of the Lord say pray for Orville can we do that right now Okay, Orville's been comatose. Orville's been, been not moving for the longest time. Orville had an attack of COVID, a strong, healthy African man, and he all of a sudden fell down and has not been able to move for so many years. But can we just speak health? Can we just speak life? Can we just speak deliverance? Every demon spirit that attached itself to that man and his family, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And we command right now that Orville's legs are swinging up. Off his bed. 
We pray that his brain right now. Father, you are rearranging his brain right now. Oh, oh, Father, I see the, the renewal and the regeneration of brain cells. Cells that have died, they're, they're coming back to life. I see it sparking again, Donna, in the name of Jesus. Parts of his body that's atrophied. Right now, those muscles and those nerve endings are beginning to spark again in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit flow through his body. Oh, we're going to hear a testimony. We're going to hear a testimony in the name of Jesus. Thank you, said church. New wine second. Prepare for this new wine outpouring. This is what the Lord said to tell you. Whether you're new here, for, you're here for the first time or you've been here with, for 12 years, prepare yourself. Amen. Because Kurt, even if he pours it out on everyone, for in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon The special reserve. Has to be in a prepared vessel. That's not an everyone outpouring. We'd like to think that it is. But it ain't. He said prepare for it. You're like how do I do that? How do I do that? Well, at the wedding of Cana, the Bible said there are six, six water jars. Everybody, I don't know if you say water, agua, pan. I don't know what you do. Pani, water, water, water. Everybody, no, I, these are all the ones I've heard people say. Water is my, one of my favorites. A little boy he told me, he said, Pastor Charles, may I have a turtle? And I put the turtle in the water. <clears throat> I took out my phone. I was like, say that again. <laughs> and anytime I feel sad, I'm playing that. Sweetest little thing. <laughs> Digress. Jesus goes to Cana. And they run out of wine at the wedding. And Jesus' mother said, they've run out of wine. And we already understand, I'm not going to go back into this and tell you that if they didn't have any wine at this wedding, that whole family would be disgraced. And all of the joy would have been sucked out of that occasion. And for those of you who feel like when you go to church, you need to be sad, depressed, bored, angry is one of my faves. Swell up. In my vernacular. Like you just feed a baby a lemon. Whatever. <laughs> and I'm making real good jokes. You ain't laughing, not you. Mm -mm. She cannot make me laugh. You right. That's not my job anyway. But Jesus is not about it. He's like... They need the joy at the wedding, right? And so this is when he says prepare. How do you prepare? How do you prepare for this outpouring? The first thing you do is there has to be a vessel. Okay, you remember the one with the kids, the boys, and the, the what did he say? He said, go get me some vessels. No vessel, no pouring. I'll say it again. No vessel, no pouring. If you are not a vessel, there's no oil for you. If you're already full, there's no outpouring for you. You want new wine, you can't mix it with old wine. In fact, you cannot even put old wine in your old dirty vessel. He said it this way. He said you can't put new wine in an old wineskin because that new wine is going to stretch and expand and it's going to mash up that wineskin. God said I would pour my spirit on you but you're stuck in your nasty old ways. So first of all we got to clean up the vessel. That old wineskin has to become a new wineskin so it can facilitate a brand new wine. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? I'm going to get out of the parable and tell you quite frankly God cannot fill your dirty vessel. 
Pastor, I go in because if he can't fill me, no, listen, he's made it available for you to clean up your vessel. There is a way. I'm going to show you something. God is going to turn water into wine, but he's not going to do it in a wine jar. Right now, there, this is a wedding and they have wine jars because in order for them to be empty, they must, must have some point been full. So if you're going to make wine, it stands to reason that you will make the wine in the wine container. Dude, right? If this gallon was made for wine, wouldn't you put the new wine in that? I mean, it already had wine in it. You still don't get it, do you? All right. Cooks. If your jar has mayo, and you want to store your curry. <laughs> you get it? You will not empty your brand new bag of, of masala curry. Is that a thing? Yeah, and put it in your mayo jar. Especially if some mayo is still in the jar. You will put the curry in the curry jar. See what I mean? If you got new wine, you would put it in the wine jar. But he doesn't do that. If you go back and read the scripture, he puts it in the purification. In the water jars that were used to pure. Okay, come with me here. He said, I'm going to give them wine, but I'm not going to put it in the old vessel. I'm not going to put it in the wine jar. I'm not going to put it in their expectations of me. I'm not going to put it in the way we used to do it in 1990. I'm not going to put it in their old anointing. I'm going to put it in a purification jar. I'm going to put it in a vessel that understands what it means to store water that washes people. What is the water? It is the word of God he's saying I'm gonna put it in a vessel that's full up of the word of God that was there to wash wash me and I will be whiter than snow the psalmist said create in me a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit within me the jar that he's looking for is a vessel that is used to clean up he told them, he said, empty out the vessel. And so they took these vessels, by the way, before you go into the, the wedding, you had to wash your hands. Yeah. Wash, these are not drinking vessels. Yeah. He said, pour out the water. Pour it out. Pour out the water first. Because whatever is in there has got to come out. Even if it's the word. Sometimes we get stuck in what somebody told us. And we miss the joy of the Lord. Because they say you're not supposed to worship God on a Sunday. You prayed to come out and celebrate the king. Because somebody put water in there. That prevents you from getting new wine. God saying throw out the old water. Yeah, it cleaned people. It's not bad water. It's just not new wine. It's good water. It could still wash. But right now he said you done washed. Next level. Are you still? Are you still needing to be cleansed? Then get to the water jar. He's saying there's no new wine if there's still dirty water. There's no, no no wine if the vessel has not been washed. So he said, if you need to repent, repent first. Because no oil comes unless repentance precedes it. Unless the vessel is cleaned up. So friend, ask the Holy Spirit right now to search your heart. God, show me the sin. Show me the secret sin. Show me the things that I've been avoiding. Show me the stuff that I don't want to hear about. Show me everything that separates me from you. Everything that will keep me from the new wine and friend have the guts to draw 
have the guts to get on your face before the Lord and beg him to forgive your sin. My kids know what I'm talking about. They're not waiting for you. They're already on their face. You getting on your spiritual face. Somebody just needs to get on their physical face and cry out to your God and say, cleanse me, O oh Lord. Remove from me my unrighteousness. Pastor, I don't have no unrighteousness. I get you, bro. And you wonder why he pours out his spirit on the young. Because they got nothing to prove to nobody. They got nothing to prove to any of the Pharisees. Somebody God is drawing you to repentance. Somebody God is say, ask me and I will forgive you. He say, ask me and I will wash you whiter than snow. He said, ask me and I'll remove your sin as far as the sea is east is from the west. So far will your sins be removed from you. Nobody will ever be able to hold that against you anymore. Because I will wash you, wash you, wash you, wash you with the water of the washing of the word somebody repent for judging your brother and sister somebody repent for bitterness that is in your heart somebody repent for sexual sexual sin and immorality somebody repent for lying and cussing somebody repent for taking the name of the Lord in vain What are they doing, Pastor Shara? What are they doing? You know what they're doing? That's what they're doing. They're taking out all the dirty. They're getting rid of all the dirty. Oh, self-righteousness, bow down before the Lord. Oh, you who are wise in your own eyes, bow down before the Lord. Oh, you who know that you're destined for hell. God says, I can change your tomorrow. I can change your destiny. You were meant to hold the filth of men's hands and feet. But I can make you a vessel fit for the master's use. I see it in my spirit. 
I see the men pouring out the water, pouring out the water. And today the word, the water is washing, is washing sons and daughters all over this congregation. Some of you in the back, you are dying to get on your face before God. Well, you got a chair that you're sitting on. Maybe your butt needs to come off it and your face needs to get on it so that you can kneel before your God and ask him to wash you clean again. Maybe he's saying, it's you son, it's you daughter. I don't want you to miss the outpouring. Jesus used the purification jars even though there were empty wine jars oh my gosh do you hear that dude I didn't even see that some of you are just empty wine jars you once had the Holy Ghost you once knew who God was and you once felt the closeness of his anointing but right now you're just an empty vessel with the smell of wine on it with the stain of the spirit on it you're just a sleepy tired clay jar wow the first thing God does is he brings true repentance which is real sorrow for your sin not Lord please forgive me and make me new again wash me in your blood so that I may go to heaven that's not repentance it's true sorrow for your sin true sorrow God convicts you of your sin friends but guess what it's not to embarrass you or point you out it's never that it's to clean you so he can fill you that you won't miss what he's going to do isn't he sweet and kind? Start your revival. The first thing you do to prepare for this revival is to repent of your sin. And now Jesus said, fill the jars with water. Fill the jars. with clean water so when your every vessel is empty he will fill you up with clean word with the, the fresh word of God mm. and that's where most of us stop but I want you to watch this if you're able these jars were filled with water just like all of you vessels there ain't a person in here that's leaving without the word you got it today you got it from 10 o'clock to now you've been getting the word through the worship through the songs through what God did in the front right now you're getting the word you're filled yes yeah, some of you are old wine vessels still empty I'm not gonna lie about it but some of you who repented of your sin all of us are clean and filled with the word but it can't stay there because what good is new wine if you keep it in the vessel it wasn't even wine yet the Bible said and Jesus said unto them I wish I had a little let me show you why I wish I had a little because that's how he showed it to me in the vision see here he said I'm gonna pour new water in that's what he's doing to some of you right now seeing things that you've never seen before in a way that you never saw it before if that's not you it's not for everyone and he said but you can't keep it in there in a clean vessel new wine will turn to old wine eventually he said the thing is this is still water until somebody pours some out he said 
go take some of the water. Listen, he didn't say go take some of the wine, you know. He said, go take some of the water and give it to the master of the ceremony. What is he saying? He's saying the word that I pour into you, take some of that out. And he's saying, as you take the water out, And you start walking with the water. With the purpose of pouring into someone else. All of a sudden, the word that I deposited in you turns into the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because without Him, word is just word. But Jesus goes, who is the word made flesh, into the water with John the Baptist and comes up out of the water and the dove rests upon Jesus. And the Bible said that the spirit of the Lord, you know what happened there? Trish, water became wine. Because you know what Christ means? Anointed one. Unless the word gets poured out of you, water never becomes wine. Get it? How do you prepare for the revival? Clean the washing vessel. Fill it with the word of God and dip some out. Go find somebody and say, taste and see that the Lord is good. I look, don't keep it for yourself. Say, you've got to come and experience. You know why you feel revival in your toes? Not because God likes you a whole lot, but because when you keep pouring, he keeps filling. If you keep pouring, he keeps filling. When they stood on the streets yesterday, witnessing to people passing by, all you were doing was dishing out from an empty, from, from a wine vessel. Eventually, that wine vessel is gonna feel like it's running out but then you look inside again and realize that it's full because he said I'm gonna give you fresh oil and everybody say fresh oil and say it like you mean it fresh oil and I want to end with this I said Lord what is this gonna look like you can show my screen and this is what he showed me he said an awareness of time I put one o'clock on the clock, not by choice. I put what I saw. I don't know what it means if it's now 1240 and it means we'll be home by one. You laugh at me if you want, I'm showing you. I will not be held responsible for holding anybody back. An awareness of time. He said, that doesn't mean that we're gonna always keep checking the time. If that's you, you missed the boat. He said, you're going to be aware, aware of the time. Get it? You'll realize, wait a minute. I'm living in that time. I am living in that time of the outpouring. This is not an ordinary day. This is not the day to back away from the kingdom of God. This is not the time for wishy-washy halfway Christian living. This is not the time for one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This is not the time to go after money and go after my own joy. This is the time to start swimming in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is the time to go grab the sons and daughters and say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in to the house of the Lord. This is the time to raise the dead, heal the sick, bind up the broken, heal the blind. This is the time that God was talking about. Some of us are going to be so acutely aware we can't do anything else. Then he said there's going to be genuine repentance. Some of you that repented tonight, you don't understand how sparkly you look. This morning, you don't understand how sparkly you look. And then he said, let me keep moving. Our people will go from anointing to glory. You'll go from wine to new wine. You mean like, oh, the anointing, it breaks every yoke. And you're telling me I'm getting out of it? No, darling, you're just going to a deeper level of it. 
it's another level of anointing you understand mm -hmm. look what he said we'll have to wheel you out drunk to your cars I was like Lord when I tell people that they'll think I say bring rum to church no 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 he's this new wine like if you saw Fabi on Friday night you'd know exactly what I was talking about Fabiola trying to get off the ground and her legs are noodles and she's like this on Christelle because when the glory hit her she could not even move if you saw some of these young people when last can you make a six-year-old light on on a, anywhere for a long amount of time if they're not asleep and Katie lay down in here for about 25 minutes <laughs> when people drunk they sleep some of you well drunk here he said it's not natural time it's only spiritual time and all of a sudden I saw Malia running look see how her hair running her hair is like flying it's a bad drawing look I was drawing fast up and down the aisle running and praising the Lord don't get nervous for me I see how you watching me like pastor you're afraid to say them kind of things what if it don't happen friend is not my job I tell you what he says and then it's his job he gets to do it and I have put my faith in him I trust in King Jesus I've already found the anchor for my soul then I said he showed me uber cars lined up that's the drawing these are Ubers, obviously. I couldn't draw as many as I saw, but I saw it from the front of the gate, going all the way around the building, around the front to the edge of this block. Uber. And I was like, that's confusing. Are we gonna like have a business with Uber or what? Are all the church members gonna become Uber drivers? He said, no, the word is gonna spread that after church here, people can't drive they're too drunk to get in their cars so after a while the ubers are just gonna line up waiting because they know where they need to take you because every day you coming out schnockered I was like really Lord he said yep they won't even have to call you're like all of you already those of you in a car now mine already thinking but how am I get to work if I leave my car here mm -hmm. way to miss the point bro Look at this one. Concert venues will lose money. Because worshiping Satan and dancing naked will look disgusting. And be exposed for the creepy that it is. He said Satan has tried to, to make the church look creepy. Oh my gosh, do you see how they're rolling on the ground and speaking in a foreign tongue? Have you ever been to one of those concerts? You want to see creepy? Have you ever seen people light a cross up on the stage and dance in blood and dance trying to look like... No, really? And that's not creepy? People are going to see it for what it is. And you know what? People are going to be more excited to see the deaf hair than see a ball go in a hoop. I don't, I'm not knocking your basketball. If you got tickets, share it with me. I'll go. That's not my point. But the stadiums are going to empty out because it's way more fun watching arms grow out than it is watching the ball get in the hoop. Man, I love having you guys in the front here. I get your energy <laughs> from the Holy Spirit sometimes. Oh, look at here. Sports stadiums will be empty because people will prefer to see tumors falling off than balls in a basket. Oh, that's the, and this is the ball. This is the, that's the basketball player all by himself in the empty state. I saw, I drew what I saw. This was God's question, my response to my question, Lord, what is new wine going to look like? He said, like this. <laughs> and when he said like this, I wrote it in big letter. I, I typed it out in red so that I shall never forget. People say to us, do you go to one of those weird churches where they dance and speak a strange language? I'd be like, no, that's what people do when they're stoned at a concert. 
I go to one of those churches where the real presence of God manifests himself where people are convicted of sin, where people are filled with the glory of God, where the atmosphere is charged with peace and joy, and where people are divinely and supernaturally healed. That's the kind of church I go to. The name of this sermon is Yeshua did this. That's how he ended that whole vision that he took me through. He said, Yeshua did this. And then he said, finish by telling those who are doubters, because you're among us. People who deny the manifestation of God's presence, that's where this comes in. Right? That big weird eye. Before you judge my eye, it took me two seconds to draw it. He said, that wasn't me. He said, <clears throat> it's like, um, there's this thing called Latisse and it's supposed to grow your eyelashes and a lot of like growth serums and stuff for eyelashes you know how they found it all these cataract patients were given these eye drops and every week every month when they went back to get checked the nurses started noticing that their eyelashes were darker and longer and then all of a sudden they realized wait a minute this is not only treating cataracts it's growing eyelashes do you know that go read it and that's how they knew and that's how it became a billion dollar market so that people won't have to wear falsies they could just grow their own when you deny the presence of the lord and the anointing that's happening in this in this house right now it's like saying my eyelashes didn't grow from latisse from that medicine because it's not written on the jar you get it? When, when you say, I don't see why that child prophesying is the Holy Spirit because I don't see in the Bible where a child prophesied. People do that, Jude. Even though he said, I will pour out of my spirit on your servants, your handmaidens, on the young and the old, and out of your mouth of babes, I have, a, okay, but it doesn't say prophesy. That's like saying, my eyelashes didn't grow from the medicine, because it is not listed as one of the side effects. But it did. You'll prophesy because of the anointing. Even if it wasn't listed as one of your side effects. <laughs> You'll get happy because of the anointing. Even if it wasn't listed as one of the side effects. You walk in victory. Your family will be mended. Sons and daughters and fathers and mothers will be united in the spirit of Almighty God when fathers take their places because it's one of the side effects. The devil will run from you because it's one of the side effects. You'll walk in power and authority. You won't have to bring your friend for somebody to lay hands on them. You'll just do it. It's one of the side effects. But you'll always know Yeshua did this. It wasn't me. Yeshua did this. That's what the next level special reserve outpouring will look like. And I'm excited for it. I'm here for it. I'm not missing it. Seriously, I've already said to them, to everybody who would listen to me, people would get mad because the service is going on for 18 hours. Some of you are like, let me dig out now. <laughs> They'll get mad because, because um, you know, you don't have stuff to do. The doors will always stay open for you. You can come, you can go, you can stay, you can leave, you can bring friends, you can not bring friends. But I guarantee you one day, very soon, you won't have a seat. You won't get one because sons and daughters will hear the noise of drunk people. They'll hear the noise as they did on the day of Pentecost and say, they're drunk. But it, it will be with the new wine. It won't be because somebody's manufactured it. We won't fake it. We won't make it. I refuse to do God's job, but I refuse 
to let a man or a woman stop him. Won't happen. Won't happen. Nobody. Won't happen. Stand with me. I told the, the leaders of our teams yesterday at a meeting, I said, sometimes I want to stop telling you everything. Like who, which preacher goes and shows you their stupid cartoons? You know, we want to preach it in a big boy voice and do it the big way. And I told the Lord, I would say, can you give me something more mature sounding? And he said, no, the day you stop, I'll give it to somebody else to say it. He said, the day you stop telling everybody exactly what I said, the way I said it, I find another daughter to say it. I'm not letting that happen. I'm saying it just like he said it. So if you want to hear what the Lord is saying, pay attention. Father, I pray that you bless your people this morning. I pray for the anointing power of the Holy Spirit to fall upon them. I pray, oh God, that your glory will fill this temple. I pray, oh God, that we will be vessels of honor fit for the master's use. I pray that you will pour out your new wine at 14282 Rockaway Boulevard. I pray that it won't be us, but Yeshua that will do this. Father, we commit to giving you all the honor for it, all the thanks for it, to acknowledging you God it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit church can you just say Holy Spirit come and fill me cleanse me and use me now say Lord I will pour out of the new wine on everyone in Jesus name Amen